only three nations in the world still fight the spread of the wild polio virus, a dreaded and debilitating disease. In Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Nigeria, polio still wreaks havoc on rural populations, tearing families apart and stealing the promising future of innocent children. What precisely is polio? According to a fact sheet on polio compiled by the World Health Organization (WHO), polio, also known as poliomyelitis, mainly affects children under five years of age. Furthermore, one in every two hundred infections leads to irreversible paralysis. Among those who are paralyzed, between five and ten percent die when their breathing muscles become immobilized. Polio is a highly infectious disease. Caused by a virus which invades the nervous system and can cause total paralysis in a matter of hours, the virus is transmitted from person to person and is most commonly spread through a common vehicle such as contaminated food and water. Most essentially, there is no cure for polio; it can only be prevented. The polio vaccine, given multiple times, can protect a child for life. But despite the availability of the easily administered oral polio virus (OPV), the preventable killer disease still claims lives in Africa's most populous nation. This reality calls for the emergence of men and women who care, people who are willing to expend time and financial resources to interrupt the transmission of this devastating disease. In the Federal Republic of Nigeria. One of such men has made the polio eradication effort a personal commitment and sacrifice to heed the call of suffering children and distraught families, both in the country and globally. One of Nigeria's most successful businessmen and its foremost philanthropist, Sir Emeka Ofo, has put together a dedicated team of caring staff and volunteers at the Sir Emeka Ofo Foundation, with a rallying cry and a primary focus. End polio now. In 2013 alone, the Sir Emeka Ofo Foundation committed an unparalleled non-governmental funding pledge of two million U.S. dollars to the anti-polio fight in Nigeria. The funds were used to facilitate the nationwide mobilization of oral polio vaccine (OPV), while also providing new facilities for Nigeria's polio survivors, such as wheelchairs. Crutches and other enabling items used to enhance their quality of life. It is no coincidence, therefore, that 2013 was a year which saw the greatest decline in polio infection ever recorded in the country. As part of its national and international anti-polio sensitization initiative, the committed staff at the Sir Emeka Ofo Foundation localized the This Close campaign for polio eradication in Nigeria. As part of the Global Eradication Polio Initiative, the Sir Emeka Ofo Foundation has supported this drive for the End Polio Now campaign by getting community leaders to say we are this close to ending polio in Nigeria.、Uh, we're very happy to have、uh, gotten the support of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, to join us in this campaign, and this has really moved the campaign forward in Nigeria. Together, we will end polio. We are this close. We are this close to ending polio. Nigeria must be polio free. The Sir Emeka Ofo Foundation has set the standard for not only philanthropic donations to global health initiatives. But also in hands-on mobilization and participation in efforts to enhance the standard of living for millions of disadvantaged and handicapped people in Nigeria and beyond. As part of its robust response to the polio scourge in Nigeria, 
the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation has launched the Differently Able Project to empower those who have already been exposed to the polio virus while advancing polio vaccination efforts across the country to protect those who have not yet been exposed to the disease. The Differently Able Project is, um, is a project that was initiated this year and the focus is supporting polio survivors, those who have, um, who have contracted polio uh, and are unable to get integrated to the community. So we are providing mobility aid uh, in terms of uh, providing wheelchairs and crutches to individuals of different age, age groups. So you have children, you have adults, um, wheelchairs to support kids to go to school, wheelchairs as well to support adults to get uh, employment so they you know they're able to get to work and um, and crutches as well because you have different stages of polio you have those that uh, that affect the individual uh, really bad and then there are those that are manageable and then they can use uh, crutches now this program uh, was initiated by the foundation and it's meant to be for the entire nation uh, we're doing it in via geopolitical zones, and we had the first distribution in the southeast. Both in business and in philanthropy, Sir Emeka Ofo insists that Nigerian challenges must be confronted and remedied with Nigerian solutions. As a result of this deeply held philosophy, the Sir Emeka Ofo Foundation made it a point to source all living aid materials for polio survivors such as wheelchairs and crutches from local manufacturers in a bid to empower Nigerians to solve problems commonly affecting them. The Beautiful Gate Handicapped People Center is a non-profit organization in Jos Plateau State founded by a handicapped Nigerian polio survivor, Ayuba Gufwan. The center has manufactured and distributed thousands of tricycle-type wheelchairs particularly suited to the needs of polio survivors, as well as crutches, since its workshop commenced operations in 2002. In line with its determination to embrace and utilize local content, the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation has partnered with the Beautiful Gate Handicapped People Center to provide living aid solutions for handicapped polio survivors across the country. As a foundation, we noticed that a lot of kids who contract polio at an early age are unable to attend school regularly, um, thereby they're not able to get the education that you know, is desired for them. They're also unable to integrate with the broader community so, you know, it's, it's hard for them to get jobs. It's hard for them to be involved in a lot of um, regular activities as you have in communities. And this is what Sayameka Offer Foundation seeks to support. We want to support communities by, uh, by assisting those who are financially handicapped. And you, uh, you have a lot of this youth in our society who are just, you know, unemployed. And, and this is mostly because they are you know, they don't have mobility aid or they are un unable because of their disability to be at par with, uh, with other members of the community. So we have come into this campaign. Sayameka Offer is the polio ambassador to Nigeria, the Rotary International Polio Ambassador to Nigeria. And, um, and he wishes to support not just the, uh, the polio eradication plan in terms of wiping polio out of Nigeria, but also creating a support system for those who are already affected by polio, not just the individuals, but their families as well, such that we are able to support kids to go to school, we're able to support adults in getting uh, empowered and probably you know, with access to some form of microfinancing so that they can start their own businesses. The number of confirmed wild poliovirus cases in Nigeria declined substantially between 2012 and 2013, from 122 cases to 50 cases between January and December, representing a massive reduction of 58% compared to the same period in 2012. Additionally, no wild poliovirus WPV type 3 was purported in 2013 at all, as the last case was reported in November 2012.
But while the transmission of WPV Type 3 has been effectively interrupted in Nigeria, there was a clear geographical restriction to and shift of polio virus transmission to the nation's northeastern states, with the majority of cases comprising 84% occurring in four states. Borno State had 16 cases, Kano State had 14 cases, Yobe State had 7 cases, and Bauchi State had 6 cases. The number of infected local government areas reporting new cases in 2013 compared to 2012 also dropped substantially from 58 local governments to 29 local governments, representing a 50% reduction in local government areas affected by the polio disease. All of the success recorded in the effort to eradicate polio from Nigeria is in no small part a consequence of the daily painstaking efforts of the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation made year-round. Given his uncommon zeal and his extensive contribution to the polio eradication effort in Nigeria, Sir Emeka Ofor was appointed as Rotary International's Global Polio Ambassador to Nigeria. So it was therefore no surprise that the collaboration between the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation and Rotary International had captured the attention of Nigeria during World Polio Day when they stood front and center as the preeminent non-governmental organizations in the fight to eradicate polio from the country. We embarked on a musician drive all across the country. Himself um, flew to Port Hackard and had um, um, administer immunization vaccine, I mean vaccine, uh, polio vaccine to children. He also traveled to Orifite, his hometown. Uh, as they say, charity begins at home, so essentially he needed to make a call to his village and organize a massive drive to immunize children under five years old. That was very successful. I was there. And then he continued those efforts in that direction, traveling all across the country, immunizing kids. The commemoration of World Polio Day played out over the course of one week of engaging activities from October 20th to October 24th, 2014, organized by the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation, Rotary International, and the National Polio Plus Committee in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Health. The series of events functioned to focus the minds of Nigerian authorities, stakeholders, and citizens on the need to eradicate the polio virus from Nigeria through enhanced sensitization while simultaneously bolstering active polio eradication efforts by raising funds and driving vaccination initiatives across the country. The week began with a walk. Uh, a lot of uh, Rotarians walked down uh, towards the, uh, the stadium, the national stadium, um, just to create that awareness, carrying flags and banners and things like that. And then on Monday, when we actually opened an exhibition, which we titled The Face of Polio, uh, showcasing uh, the faces of children who are afflicted with polio, uh, adults who are, were also survivors of polio, and also painting a picture of uh, men and women who have survived polio, in spite of the disability, they were still able to uh, attain great heights in life, you know, education-wise, maybe in politics and, and uh, disciplines like engineering and, and all that stuff. So we were able to do that. The event actually held at Yeradra Center here in Abuja, and that's where we had the exhibition. It was really a good turnout. I mean, the uh, Minister of State for Health was present. Uh, some of the key top hierarchy uh, members of Rotary, Rotary Club was also present. Uh, Sam Ekofor himself was there too. Um, and if you take, took a walk of the museum with all the uh, pictures and uh, exhibitions that went on. And so that continued throughout the week. But on Wednesday, we were um, in Oka uh, to uh, distribute the wheelchairs that I mentioned earlier and to conduct an immunization. Now, Sam Ekofor also used that opportunity to make a courtesy call to the governor of, uh, of uh, Anambra State, uh, Chief Willie Obiano, and that was also uh, an important visit because on that day um, the governor also indicated that his commitment to see that children are immunized in the region, uh, encouraging Sam Ekofor in his work, philanthropic work, and his commitment to see total eradication of polio. 
And I, I think uh, at that day, on that day also, the governor made a pledge of five million naira donation towards uh, the polio eradication efforts of St. Michael IV. Uh, so that was a really good uh, meeting. And then we returned back to Abuja, and that's when we had the uh, book lunch on Friday. and uh, especially the DG and members of the crew that have worked tirelessly in putting these things together. Your effort is quite uh, highly appreciated. Thank you. After joining hands with the Minister of State for Health, Kaliru Al Hassan, to open a week long fundraising art exhibition at the Shehu Musa Yarodwa Center in Abuja, the staff of the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation flagged off the differently able project for the Southeast Geopolitical Zone in Oka, the capital city of Anambra State, on Wednesday, October 22nd, during which the Executive Governor of Anambra State, Willy Obiano, welcomed Rotary International's Global Polio Ambassador to Nigeria, Sir Emeka Ofor, and his passionate team from the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation to the state ahead of the polio vaccination and living aid distribution exercises. On his part, Governor Obiano donated the whopping sum of 5 million naira to the polio eradication initiative embarked upon by the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation in partnership with Rotary International. Leading the effort in Oka, Sir Emeka Ofo personally administered oral polio vaccine, OPV, to several babies and young children at Amabia Health Center, after which the renowned philanthropist arrived at the Barnes Hill Hotel as he encouraged the disadvantaged and disabled people present at the event to maintain hope and confidence in themselves so that they can confidently play a role in national development and live meaningful lives. Sir Emeka Ofor and his caring staff of volunteers handed out 500 locally manufactured tricycle wheelchairs and over 100 crutches for distribution to the five states of the Southeast Geopolitical Zone. We had over 400 uh, polio survivors attend the event. Um, the distribution was done in various stages, so we have states being represented and uh, their representatives basically uh, provide their names and their data so that we can ensure that we actually get the wheelchairs across to those in most need. After the successful conclusion of the distribution drive in Oka, the team returned to the nation's capital city of Abuja where they launched the distribution of new speaking books which would audibly translate written anti-polio sensitization stories in the Hausa language. The books are designed to sensitize children and educators in Nigeria's polio-exposed northern region. So it tells the story in Hausa and in English. Now why did we think this was important to have it in, in different languages? We noticed that uh, polio is predominantly in the northern part of the country. Well, that's where we have most cases that we've identified this year. That's the trend that we've noticed. Now, a lot of rural communities um, are, don't really have access to the type of education that we have in cities and in urban centers. So we are trying to make this book accessible to anyone, the young, the old, and it's in the native dialect in Hausa. It's easier for them to, to read, it's easier for them to live through the, the images and just see what the, the graphics are telling them, how a family uh, had a kid that had contracted polio and how this came about because of the hygiene in the community and what their other kid was doing to inform people in the community about polio and how it affects them and how they can actually avoid getting polio by having access to clean water 
and proper hygiene, washing your hands before eating. And I think these are basic things, not just for polio, but for, you know, just avoiding a lot of uh, diseases that go around. The Polio Awareness Speaking Books for Children has been endorsed by the Jamatu Nasril Islam, which means that the books can be kept and used in mosques and Islamic scholarship academies nationwide. We commend the effort of the foundation of uh, Emeka for this financial support, which is supposed not to be only him, but older wealthful individuals, please should follow suit, particularly northerners that are rich, so that those victims of polio will see that it's coming from the source of theirs. Our plea and call to government and all other partners to this foundation is that a serious advocacy and enlightenment should follow suit after this book launch so that everybody will see it as a real situation that can be surmounted, God's willing. Together, we can end polio, and we can end it now. We are this close. On a busy concluding day of Polio Week activities, stakeholders from the Sir Emeka O4 Foundation and Rotary International joined hands with the Polio Survivors Group to watch para soccer players play at the National Stadium in Abuja. After the match, vaccinations were administered and trophies were handed out to awardees. Okay. Hours later, all participants joined new donors in attendance at the final Polio Week awards and fundraising dinner hosted by Rotary International's Nigerian National Polio Plus Committee and the Sir Emeka Ofor Foundation. After a night of speeches, networking and fine dining, a successful fundraising drive received a major boost. Within the short, shortest possible time, this, the issue of polio will be out from the whole world. That's our target, right? Well, this evening, I am going to make a little donation of 50 million naira. To Uh, this has been a big journey for Saimek al uh, something that's very dear to his heart, which is to see the total eradication of polio from Nigeria. As you well know, polio is still endemic in Nigeria, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. So the end game uh, for Saimek al is to see complete eradication of polio from this country and also ultimately the rest of the other endemic countries. So far in 2014, which is this year, we only have six cases. Now, you need to understand where we came from. When Sam Ekofor entered into this project um, as part of his philanthropy, that was in 2012. At that particular time, we had about 122 cases of polio uh, in, uh, around, and that case was dropped down to 53 in 2013 after his initial $1 million donation to Rotary International. I became Rotary International Polio Ambassador in 2013 and made a subsequent donation of another million dollars in 2014. Now, these uh, cumulative um, uh, 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 contribution to the Global Polio Eradication in Initiative of the uh, Rotary International has made significant impact. And so we are hopeful that the end game is that uh, before the end of this year or as early as January or February next year, we should see uh, to complete total eradication. And so he's really determined to see that come to through. At a moment in Nigerian history when the polio virus has never been so close to complete eradication in the land, the determination and generosity of one man alongside a dedicated group of caring volunteers and hard-working staff members has made a difference felt by thousands of disadvantaged families.
While the Sir Emeka Olfor Foundation has succeeded in massively contributing to the unprecedented rate of reduction of poliovirus infection in Nigeria, the team insists that the ultimate aspiration of Sir Emeka Olfor is the complete eradication of poliovirus, not just from Nigeria alone, but from the world. And so the fight goes on.